Now in this section we will be discussing on something called NSSA. Now NSSA is the next uh, stub area after that stub and total stub what we discussed. Yesterday we discussed in the previous class we have seen something called stubs. What it is going to do? It is going to stop your E1 E2 routes and the border router is going to stop those routes and instead of that it is going to send a single default route. That's what we have learned with the stubs and then also we have seen something called total stub. Now the total stub is something it's going to stop the E1 E2 routes as well as OA routes and it's going to replace with a single default route. And also we have seen in the previous stub concept like when you are going to configure as a stub the areas which cannot be a stub area which cannot be configured as a stub what, is, what are those areas? We cannot make area 0 as a stub that's what we have learned and also we cannot make area with an ASBR cannot be a stub right and also the area with virtual link cannot be a stub okay so whichever the area you're going to make that area should not come under these three categories but what if I have configured one area as a stub and that area also have an ASBR so we got an exception so we cannot make any area with an ASBR as a stub what if I have a stub and that area is doing redistribution so by default what happens when you configure redistribution probably when you say when you say stub it simply stop LSS files automatically by default and it will not pass on to the other areas but I want to pass the external routes through the stub area and I want to have an area with an ASBR should be configured as a stub. Now in that case we have an exception we can make it to not so stubby area. Now not so stubby area is an another implementation of the stub where we can have a stub configuration with ASBR. So simple we can say that okay now whatever the area we are going to configure as a stub it can be it can also have an ASPR that's what we call as not so stubby area so this something we'll be discussing much more in detail with stubs let me take an example here a simple diagram to understand more in detail what exactly NSSA is going to do so our focus is on NSSA not so stubby area okay so let me take a diagram here multiple areas I got area 0 sorry area 10 let's say and I got an area 0 and I got an area 20 I got three different areas and as per our diagram like the previous examples we have seen that I got a routes coming from EHRP getting redistributed into OSPF now area 20 is doing distribution and it is having ASBR here and then all your external routes if you just go back with the stop concept the normal stop concept what we have learned all your E1 E2 routes will be getting redistributed from here it goes to area 20 from the area 20 it comes back to area 0 and this area 0 border router here which is connecting between area 10 and area 0 is going to stop LSFI right it's going to stop your E1 E2 routes and instead of that when it is advertising back to internal routers it is going to advertise just the default route this is what a concept of stub. Now the extension to the stub is your NSSA. Now what if I have some other routes? Maybe in the future I got some more routes which are learned through some other protocol like RIP or EAGRP and now I am doing the distribution of these routes. By default, let's take an example what happens in this scenario by default. Now in this scenario your routes will get redistributed into as E1 E2 but as this area is a stub area it will not allow the external routes so which means these routes will not get advertised to any other router inside the area 10 and also it will not get advertised to area 0 it will not get advertised to area 20 because when we say stub it simply stop LSA 5 that's what we have learned so which means we cannot have an area with a stub with an ASBR here but I want to have an ASBR also at the same time I want some default routes for this I want the same behavior like this this is what I want plus 
plus I want to allow external routes to pass through the stub area. I want these external routes to pass through the stub area at the same time, same time I want. So in that case, what I can do, I got a solution for this. I can configure it as NSSA. So once I configure it as NSSA, what it is going to do is, it is going to give the same behavior of the stub. Like you can have an E1, E2 routes, come as external routes, come up to here, the border router, and the border router will send a default route, more like a stub plus additionally. So additionally, what I want, I want to allow my external routes to pass through the stub area, which means at the same time, I want these external routes to pass through to the stub area. So to make this possible, what I can do is I can simply go and configure this area as NSSA. I need to remove the stub configurations if you if you already have. I need to remove that configurations. I need to configure these areas as NSSA, not so stubby area. And the not so stubby area, what it is going to do? It's going to allow the external routes, which means whatever the routes learn from this side, it will be going through the stub area. It will reach the other area also. So that's what allowing the external routes. Now, when they go through this stub area, that is NSSA, they will be advertised as LSS7 throughout the stub area as LSS7 advertisements. Uh, normally output wise we'll see them as ON1, ON2. I'll show you this practically, we'll verify those outputs. And once they reach the border router here, they will be advertised again back as LSA5 again to other area routers. Okay. So NSSA, in simple I can say, when we talk about NSSA, it's a stub with ASBR. In simple we can say it's a stub plus allowing the external stub with ASBR we can say in simple words we can define stub, stub area with an ASBR we call it as NSSA okay so we can still have an router which is doing the distribution of the routes they pass through the stub and then reaches the other area also